Hello and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G and today I'll be focusing on the process of ketogenesis. Ketogenesis is a process by which fatty acids are transformed into ketones such as acetoacetate, 3-hydroxybutyrate and acetone. Now any of you out there that have been on a low carbohydrate diet may remember that distinct smell which is a smell of acetone and that acetone has been produced as a direct consequence of ketogenesis and we'll be looking more at how that acetone is produced as a consequence of low carbohydrate supply to the metabolism. Now ketogenesis takes place in the liver and more specifically within the mitochondria. Now under aerobic conditions glucose and fatty acids can be metabolized to give acetyl-CoA. The acetyl-CoA is then further metabolized within the citric acid cycle within the matrix of mitochondria. Now the fate of acetyl-CoA is dependent on the availability of a very important substrate called oxaloacetate, which in turn is dependent on carbohydrate supply. Now when glucose is available to cells, Glucose can be metabolized into pyruvate by glycolysis. Some of this pyruvate can be converted into oxaloacetate by gluconeogenesis within the liver. This gives the citric acid cycle an ample supply of oxaloacetate, allowing it to process acetyl-CoA formed from other metabolic pathways, such as the beta-oxidation of fatty acids. When glucose is unavailable to cells, e.g. during very low carbohydrate diets, fasting or uncontrolled type 1 diabetes, pyruvate cannot be formed by glycolysis. This in turn leads to a decreased availability of oxaloacetate for the citric acid cycle. Now this does not mean that oxaloacetate cannot be formed from other substrates. In fact, amino acids such as aspartate can also generate oxaloacetate. Now any oxaloacetate formed from amino acid metabolism is however used by gluconeogenesis to supply glucose to the peripheral tissues. These tissues, for example red blood cells, the brain, and the medulla of the kidney rely on glucose as their main energy source. This leaves less oxaloacetate for the citric acid cycle within the cells of the liver. This creates an issue as it leads to a backup of acetyl-CoA entering the citric acid cycle. This however is overcome by ketogenesis which has the capacity to reduce this buildup by converting excess acetyl-CoA into ketones. So in short, a deficit in supply of oxaloacetate to the citric acid cycle triggers ketogenesis within the liver. This in turn leads to the subsequent buildup of ketones within the body. Some of these ketones are acidic, which can lead to a drop in blood pH, causing a buildup in acid. While not life-threatening for individuals with normal functioning carbohydrate metabolism, it does become a major issue for insulin-dependent diabetics which have lost the ability to produce insulin from the pancreas. Recall how the liver can still produce glucose from non-carbohydrate sources, e.g. amino acids through gluconeogenesis. This glucose continually builds up in the bloodstream but cannot enter cells without the presence of insulin Based on this, any potential energy supply to the cells from glucose is made obsolete. The body, in an attempt to bridge this energy gap, begins breaking down vast amounts of fat, releasing fatty acids, which then enter beta-oxidation, producing significant amounts of acetyl-CoA. In the absence of oxaloacetate, due to impaired glucose metabolism, the vast amounts of acetyl-CoA are subsequently converted into acidic ketones which build up rapidly leading to life-threatening ketoacidosis. Individuals who have normal insulin function during times of carbohydrate deprivation e.g. fasting or extreme low carbohydrate diets are spared from these devastating set of events. 
these individuals can still produce insulin to help facilitate the movement of new glucose produced by gluconeogenesis back into cells. This in turn slows down the entry of acetyl-CoA into ketogenesis by diverting it back into the citric acid cycle, reducing ketoacidosis.